Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic, host of Bachelor in Paradise, a guy's review. That's right. We've got some Paradise recaps to get to. We just covered Golden Bachelor, and now we have Cat rejecting the rejection. That's right. You can't fire me. I quit. My name's Cat. You want to dump me? I'll let you dump me, but I'm going to dump you next. But I was just being polite, and it turns out I would have dumped you first, but I let you go first, and that's why I waited till you responded before. That's like playing chess where you just let the other person make every move first. Okay, we're going to get into this whole story. I take notes. I read them back to you. We're doing the mobile setup here. I'm traveling between Kentucky and Tennessee and Rhode Island. I'm all over the map, folks. We're going from bourbon country to uh, hot chicken sandwiches to clam chowder. I tell you what, we're loving life. All right, so Brayden asks Kat what's going on in her head. Pretty nice of Brayden to console Kat. That's how you know it's going rough on Kat when even the guys that hate her are like, hey, are you doing okay? Are we all right? Tanner tells Kat. Cat, he doesn't see a future outside of paradise. So let's get over there. So as we know, we watched this last episode. Uh, Davia comes down <clears throat> and Tanner and Davia have a nice little canoodle. And now Cat's like, oh boy, this isn't going well. Cat gets offended even though Tanner tried to talk to her beforehand. It's just never enough. You don't talk to me beforehand. Then he talks to you beforehand. You didn't ask my permission when you talk. It just goes on and on and on. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so he says he doesn't see a future outside of paradise, and she says, I am so much better than you. Kat says she didn't break up with him, that it was mutual, uh, or that he didn't break up with her, you know? And then she tells Tanner, you're all good. He's like, I hope we could be okay. And she's like, you're all good, which means he's forever on her shit list. That's what that means. You know, if you've ever fought with your lady and she's like, no, it's good, it's fine. No worries. Not a big deal. It's not over. It ain't over. It's just beginning. You don't even open mouth make out, she said uh, <laughs> about Tanner. Oh, boy. You don't You don't even tongue punch me with that old slapper. You know what I mean? All right. Kat then tells the girls that it's mutual between her and Tanner. There's lots of red flags. She says she walked away from him. Yikes. What the heck is going Look, what are they feeding them in the, on the beaches of Mexico over here? Uh, she's got a, a churros. She's got to too many churros or something because what is she talking about? Does she not remember it's on TV? This isn't live theater. We get to use the rewind button. Yeah. Either way, Tanner's like, glad to be out of there. So meanwhile, Tanner says he didn't handle, she didn't handle their initial convo well, that she was passive aggressive and all that. And it's like, yeah, no worries. Uh, that's because you don't kiss with your tongue. You know what I mean? Uh, you're all good. Uh, that's my, <laughs> that's going to be my answer to all the haters out there. Leave me a comment. I'm going to respond with, you're all good. No worries. All right. So either way, Kat says she let him talk first, but that she walked away from him. They call Tanner an F-boy. Pilot Pete, yeah, the new Pilot Pete, calls it a double standard, and Braden calls it disrespectful. Yeah, they're over there talking, and then they just hear some chant like, Woo, F-boy! Which, by the way, is a great promo for Katie Thurston's new show, uh, F-boy Island. Uh, have you watched it? It's a good show. Well shot. Nice theatrics. Good camera lens. Everyone looks hot. You gotta look hot on TV. And Bachelor in Paradise could be so much sexier if it wasn't on ABC. You know what I mean? If this, if they shot this MTV style, or, you know, I don't know, Jersey Shore, you know, Jersey Shore, just something, put a little more grit on this show. I mean, they're too busy throwing sarongs on everyone's butt cracks. Let them live a little. I'm going to start a new GoFundMe. Let the asses air out. That's what it's going to be. No sarongs on my TV. Trade a sarong for a thong. That's what I'm... So, you know what I mean? Let them kiss with their mouths open, for God's sakes. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So anyway, they call Tanner the F-boy. The men are like, well, that, that's, that makes no more sense. Tanner was a, uh, I mean, he was a consummate gentleman, wasn't he? Um, Blake is fed up with Jess Gerard Teeter tottering, so we'll get back to him in a second. Jean V, Jean V, uh, returns from Zach's season of The Bachelor. Let's see if we can get a graphic there. Oh boy, that's coming soon. So let's see uh, where Jean V. Nope, 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 nope. There it is. All right, so Blake wants to test the waters, as it were. He'd like to dip his toes into the new sandy beaches of Jean V. And Jess says, uh, Be careful what you wish for, because Blake is giving you space. Jess is like, I just could use a little space. And then Bachelor producers are like, all right, all right, bring in some more ladies. Jess needs some space. 
let's make her feel stupid. Let's bring in another lady and let them all realize that they're dis- dispendable. Is that a word? Dispendable? Uh, dispensable? Dispen- de- de- dependable? Anyway, and not they're, they're anything but dependable. Uh, no depends there. Uh, just sarongs and thongs. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, Jess says she was feeling trapped, and now she isn't. So there she is, Jess. Jess feels overwhelmed and says she hasn't had anything go her way. She feels stupid because she's the one who wanted to explore. At least she understands that she should feel stupid. And look, I, I'm not saying Jess speaks for every woman in her early to mid-20s, but I will say you could have something right there in front of you. I mean, gosh, Blake's gorgeous. He's strong. He's got high calf muscles. The dude's got a nice tan, even for for a Canadian, and he saves sea turtles. Ladies, what the hell else do you want in a guy? I mean, see, you know what I mean? Like, what do you want? I'll blow the guy. What are you talking about? Uh, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But Jess, uh, you know, she needs to, she needs to date Mr. Wrong before she can have Mr. Right, I guess. Either way, I still think Blake will be the bachelor of 2025 if we, uh, if we're still around uh, when that time comes. I'll be an old man by then. I'll be on the Golden Bachelor. All right. So Jess feels overwhelmed. Uh, Cat meddles in Eliza's dating life. Let's go back to that graphic. Where is that at? So Cat's meddling in Eliza's dating life. This is going to be a whole nother story that's going to come out. We're going to have a third video just covering some of the shenanigans happening on the beach between Olivia. Kylie, there's a, there's a real melee spilling out. I'll actually I'll tease you right here. Here it is. There's a real melee spilling out onto the uh, Twitter, uh, formerly known as or what is it called X, whatever the hell it's called. Okay, so Cat. Okay, so Cat Ch- says. Charity warned her to avoid Aaron. Uh, whether or not this is true, we're going to have to wait and see. But poor Aaron, you know what I mean? He's on the beat. She's doing his own thing. He found a nice lady. Look, everybody has a history, guys. Everybody dates the wrong person, says the wrong thing, comes from a place where they had to learn, grow, do better. And maybe, just maybe, Aaron was not the best boyfriend in the past. That doesn't mean he's not going to bring his best self moving forward, learn and grow, adapt, evolve. Come on, folks. Cat mentions that Aaron just had a girlfriend. Meanwhile, as Eliza explains this to Olivia, Olivia says, Yo, Cat, in a panic mode, she will do anything. All uh, right, Becca. So, I mean, what do you want me to say about this other than justice for Aaron? We like Aaron. Bre- uh, let's see. Becca from Zach's season arrives. A one-nighter. Oh, boy. We got the. Not that they had a one-night stand, but a one-nighter in the sense that. Um, this. You ever watch a, a sh- Full House and the younger. And the, and the Olsen twin uh, has an evil sister or an evil cousin show up from Greece or something. And it's actually her real twin. They just put a wig on her. That's what this feels like. This is like Rachel Recchia's evil twin shows up. I mean, there's no evil here. It's just one's blonde, one's brunette, but very similar. In um, in um, I don't know uh, aura, if you will. Am I allowed to say that their auras seem similar? All right. Braden says Becca looks like a firecracker, which is absolutely an amazing, uh, you know, thing to call a woman. You know, nothing like saying a lady looks like an explosive. Hey, let's blow some limbs off, Becca. Um, that's a that's a that's a blowjob nobody wants when you blow a limb off. Uh, firecracker references, folks. All right, don't get pregnant for by blowing a rim a, a limb or a, or a rim off. All right, <laughs> what are you doing with those firecrackers? They are a good match in energy, Becca. Okay, I said Becca looks like the brunette Rachel Reich. Yeah, I know. I know. Like they don't have everything in common, but I'm just saying from a uh, from an energy level, I think they they have uh, similar. And yet they're the yin to each other's yang, if you will. Uh, they're Sagittarius's. I don't know what that even means. All right. Astrology's not real. All right. Come at me, ladies. Be a Virgo. <laughs> you know what I mean? A bunch of Ari's getting mad out there. Okay. Uh, Becca kind of looks like a... Okay. They... Uh, they. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is what I wrote down. They look like they're twins separated at birth, united by Braden smooches. Uh, that would be like a weird sort of genie in the bottle. You don't have to rub the bottle. You just have to kiss Braden and a new version of yourself pops up. All right. How about, how's that for a sci-fi film? Uh, Blake. Blake hits it off well with Genevieve. Let's go back to them. He hits it off well. Jess gets confirmation from Tyler that he's into her. I have a business degree. Why are we commenting on this? Why not? It's fun. Uh, 
he says he'd take her on a date if he gets a date card. And they have that look with each other where they're like, oh, we could kiss right now, but people are watching, you know, kind of one of those things. And then as she starts to look to see if anyone's watching, Tyler moves around. And the only term I can use to describe what he did was mounting. He mounted Jess, goes all in for the kiss, and they play hot and heavy sexy music. Well-edited moment. It was a well, you know, I, look, this this scene you know, where they're making out, then it cuts to Blake and Mercedes making out. It was it was edited well. It was a good job. They got to cut to Blake smooching in the waters. It's safe. It's a mutual split. Clearly, they weren't that into each other. They knew it. Whether or not the producers share those moments with us, they were just, you know what? Back, uh, Jess and Blake were each other's just warm, you know, uh, back burner. They were, a, they were soup that was sitting on the back burner on the back of the stove until something better came along. Anyway, here it is the long awaited moment with pageant music. Charity arrives. Da, 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 da. Aaron and Brayden are slow to get up. They're like, oh boy, yeah, Charity's here. Well, you know, let's just get another drink at the bar. Luckily, Charity can uh, correct the record between Eliza and all that. Eliza grabs Charity to chat privately, and receipts shall be exchanged. Meanwhile, Aaron grabs Cat to chat. Aaron calls out Cat in a completely calm and mature way. Where's the Aaron and Cat? Did we have a photo of them? No, that's Aaron and Eliza. Either way, Aaron calls out Cat. They're on the beach, speaks to her, and um, Cat says she was there as a friend to Aaron. Aaron says these rumors might ruin his life. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was Cat being a friend to Aaron there? Cliffhangers, folks. Charity says. His former girlfriend exposed him, and that's where it all ends up. That's where the cookie crumbles. I'd love to know what you guys think about this episode. I know a lot of people have said, oh, you know, I haven't really enjoyed this season, but I think it's starting to pick up. I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, honestly, you have to give credit for to Cat. Cat, in some ways, is carrying this season. You got to give credit where it's... I mean, imagine if Cat wasn't on this season. What would we have? We'd have Pouty Jess. You know what I mean? Like, what else is there to talk about? I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment, and we'll be back with more right after this.